My name is Nicole Stacker and I'm a museum educator with the Dunn Museum. In this video, we're going to be examining one of my favorite topics and one of the first things you see when you visit the museum, our dinosaur. Many wonder if this is a Tyrannosaurus rex. It is part of the same theropod group of dinosaurs, but this is a life-size model of Dryptosaurus, a dinosaur that lived approximately 67 million years ago, we think right here in Lake County, Illinois. As you can probably guess, Dryptosaurus was a carnivore and would have been about 20 feet long. During the late Cretaceous, present-day North America was divided down the middle by a great seaway. On the western side, Tyrannosaurus rex was the top meat eater, while on the eastern side, Dryptosaurus was one of them. The name means tearing lizard, which refers to the eight inch claws on each hand. Fossils for this dinosaur were first discovered in New Jersey in 1866 by American paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope. Fossils are the remains of plants and animals from the past. The harder parts of animals, such as bones, teeth, and bony parts of claws, have a higher chance of fossilizing. Can you imagine finding fossils for an animal that you cannot see in person? This is Cope's drawing from 1867, with Dryptosaurus depicted in the middle. Does it look like our Dryptosaurus today? Cope originally named this dinosaur Laylaps aguilunguis, without realizing that Laylaps had already been applied to a type of mite. Interestingly, Cope's rival, American paleontologist O.C. Marsh, ultimately named it Dryptosaurus in 1877. Though Dryptosaurus was the first partial skeleton of a predatory dinosaur ever found in the United States, it's a lesser known dinosaur today because only a small portion of the overall body of the dinosaur has actually been found. In general, dinosaur fossils from Eastern North America are pretty rare. Let's take a look at a few Dryptosaurus fossil casts. A cast is a copy of a fossil, and it's made from a mold taken from the real fossil. The copy can be made from materials such as plaster and fiberglass. Here we have a section of jaw with a tooth sticking out. Here is a single tooth. For comparison in size, this is a tooth from a Tyrannosaurus rex. Dryptosaurus was about half the size of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Here is the claw. This claw would have also had a large sheath around it, making the claw even longer than it appears here. And this is a single finger bone. Compare that to my fingers here, and it gives you a good idea of how large Dryptosaurus really was. This life-size model was made for the Dunn Museum in 2017 by Chicago-based paleo artist Tyler Keeler. The model is considered the first scientifically accurate, fleshed out model of Dryptosaurus in existence. Paleo artists collaborate with paleontologists to recreate prehistoric life based on known scientific information. Keeler used Cope's notes about the original fossils and looked at closely related animals today in order to create this fleshed out model. Keeler also made this head for the museum in 2009. The drastic differences in appearance between the two models demonstrate how what we know about dinosaurs continues to evolve as scientists explore and explain the natural world. As new fossils are discovered and advances in technology allow for re-examination of past fossil finds, researchers are able to provide more extensive details about what these prehistoric animals might have looked like. This is also why our model today looks quite a bit different than how Cope depicted this dinosaur in his original drawing. One of the biggest differences between the two models has to do with these. Some think this is fur, but it's actually feathers. In recent years, paleontologists have found a significant number of fossils of large dinosaurs with evidence of feather remains. These finds provide further details about what those feathers could have looked like and where they most likely existed on the body. Since these feather remains have been found with other closely related dinosaurs, Dryptosaurus most likely had feathers too. These dinosaurs had proto feathers, which were fuzzy in appearance because they do not have an essential quill like many bird feathers today. Feathers also could not grow through scales, so each type of body covering would have a distinct border. 
What purpose feathers served on a dinosaur is still being researched, but they may have helped to regulate body temperature. Did you know that birds and extinct dinosaurs have so much in common that birds are considered living dinosaurs? These living dinosaurs are part of the theropod family tree, like Dryptosaurus. Keep that in mind the next time you go outside in the Lake County Forest Preserves. We hope you'll stop by to see our Dryptosaurus dinosaur in person and learn more about other fascinating extinct creatures from Lake County, Illinois' past. To learn more about the Dunn Museum and Lake County history, visit lcfpd.org museum. And please subscribe to our channel below to stay updated on our latest videos.